This right here is the Galaxy A31 and I've been using this device for quite some days now and trust me, this device is a real beast. I mean, I'll call it a beast because <laughs> performance wise, battery wise, I mean, it's doing a lot. So today I'm here to share my thoughts on this device and to tell you whether or not if you can get this device, I'm Delpy and welcome to my channel. So smash the subscribe button if you haven't, leave a like on the video, share it to other people who would want to purchase this Galaxy device and leave a comment about what you think about the device if you are using it as well. And also, let me know what device you're watching this video on. So, let's begin with the build quality. So, taking a critical look at the design, it's quite similar to other Samsung mid-ranges like the A50 and the A51. The A50 in the sense that at the front side of the device, it looks quite similar since it has a U-shaped cutout like the A30 and then the A50. But at the back side or at the rear side, you have the camera setup looking like the Galaxy A51 and also you have the Samsung inscription and some quadratic lines that make it look a bit um, amazing. Although the back of the device is not glass, it still gives you that premium feel you get whenever you get a flagship device. If you're buying the device and there's no Samsung inscription there, please note that it's not original because Samsung always have the inscription there and that's just one thing to take note if you want to know whether you're getting an original variant. On the sides of the device, which is the right side, we have a volume rocker buttons and the power button. At the lower side, you have the USB-C charging port, a microphone port, speaker grills and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. At the left side is where the SIM tray is located. So on the SIM tray, you're having two options. I'm sorry, you're having three options. You have the option to add expandable storage and two SIM cards, two nano SIM cards, yes. The variant I have here is 128 gigs, so I don't really think I'll need an expandable storage, but until I do, I would add one. And before I sum everything up for the build, please, this device is a very slippery device. So in order to avoid slips and falling down and breaking it like Hobby Spikey always does, please get a case for it and a screen protector to protect you from damages. The display on this device is a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display and it's a 1080p panel so you can stream content up to a maximum of 1080p on YouTube or wherever you stream your content. Still on the display, it gives a sharp very crisp, bright and contrasty displays that makes you feel immersed in whatever you're watching or whatever you're viewing. The variant I have here comes with a 4GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. Although there are other variants like 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage and 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. Depends on what your budget goes for. You can pick any of those variants but in my preference i really love it if you can go for the 6 gigabytes of ram and 128 gigabytes of internal storage since that would really help in the field of performance talking about performance this device really holds up in the arena of performance i mean i haven't really had a gaming test yet on this device as that would be a separate video so i'll be doing gaming test which will be a different one a really really separate one uh, but aside from that, apps run smoothly, opening apps and surfing through the internet and everything runs smoothly. Although it's a 60 hertz panel, it really does very well. I mean, I'm very impressed with how smooth things are running. Maybe after a long time usage, I might have some lags, but I don't think that's going to be the case on here because really, really, I'm really, really impressed with how far things are going. Now, I'm impressed in the sense that this is a MediaTek device, not a Snapdragon or Exynos device. So sometimes there are some heating up issues that are really minimal and subtle. You don't really get them more often. Maybe when I start my gaming text, I might observe them. But so far, no heating up, no, no super heating up issue yet. Great performance on this one so far. And yeah, like I said, seven true apps is really, really smooth. Now let's talk about the cameras. I mean, I can't talk about the phone without talking about the cameras. The cameras on this device is super great. I tried some live focus images like you're seeing now with myself and a couple of other images with a selfie camera. And yeah, the U-shape cutout on the device houses the 20 megapixel selfie camera for the Galaxy A31. And this 
selfie camera is doing the most. It takes very crisp and detailed selfies and especially with the live focus, I'm mind blown because it does a lot in that arena. At the rear side, we have a 48 megapixel main camera shooter, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 5 megapixel macro shooter, and then a 5 megapixel depth of field lens. And I must say, I've been so impressed with the back camera so far, even though it's a quad camera setup and the number of lenses don't really mean that much as software updates could really improve the cameras on this device. I really love the back camera, but comparing it to the front facing camera, uh, I'll choose the front facing camera over this because even though it does some pretty amazing shots when you are quite steady with it, I still really wish there could be some improvements via software. Yeah. In my, in my opinion. Here are some video and image samples of this device. So this is the video quality of the front facing camera. And well, I must say I'm actually impressed. Way better than the Huawei P30 Lite, in my opinion, especially with how it detects the edges and has more focus on the individual than whatever is behind it. And yeah, I think it's now blowing up my shirt a bit because my shirt is really white. Uh, okay, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section. This is the video quality of the rear facing camera and particular image stabilization isn't a thing on it and uh, you know still does well on the job though but it's not really cool it's just too much it's not really blown out though but no maybe there's too much sunlight let me know your thoughts in the comment section now to the final part the batteries i actually leave the batteries for the final part because after taking your pictures gaming running through the internet turning on your mobile data and doing everything how long can this device last you when you use it and in my opinion or so far 124 hours yes because this device packs a 5000 milliamp hour battery and it comes with a 15 watt fast charging adapter and a USB-C charging cable so you can get your device charged from 0 to 30 percent in about 30 minutes and in almost an hour your device should be fully charged if you are not doing so much like gaming streaming content regularly it should take you 124 hours before the battery goes down so to the last bit of it should you or should you not get the device Yes, you should get the Galaxy A31 if you have the budget for it. I'm talking about budget, depending on your storage size and RAM variant, it should cost you ranging from 1,200 CDs to 1,500 CDs. And that should approximately be $200 and over. So maybe $225, that is if it's within that range. And I mean, Battery life is excellent, performance is great, selfie camera takes very crisp and detailed pictures. Like uh, the rear like camera though, the mm, yeah, does it for yeah, me, yeah, so yeah, you should definitely get the <laughs> Galaxy A31 <laughs> and probably dump your, it's not on. I don't know what phone you're using, but yeah, you should probably dump it. I'm Delpy, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you guys in another one. Stay safe, peace out.